On my 14th day in Scotland, I had a six-hour drive from Dornoch back to Glasgow. So along the way, I stopped about the midpoint at Dalwini Distillery. Dalwini Distillery is located in the Highland Village of Dalwini in the Cane Gorm National Park in the Scottish Highlands. However, it is located within both the Highland and Speyside region, so it can legally be called either Highland or Speyside Whiskey. It is currently the highest distillery in the country at an elevation of 1164 feet or 355 meters above sea level, and it experiences the coldest temperatures. In fact, when I visited in June of 2018, there was still a little bit of snow in a crevice in the nearby mountain. The site for the distillery was chosen for its access to clear spring water from the Loch Dor Wain and abundant peat from the surrounding bogs. The distillery was built in 1897 by a consortium of whiskey businessmen where the Great North Road and Highland Railway meet. The distillery was first called Strath Spey in 1898. The name was then changed to Dalwini, which means Plain of Meetings in Gaelic, referring to the meeting of ancient cattle drovers routes through the mountains. Dalwini is part of Diageo's classic malt series representing the Central Highlands. All right, I hope you've been enjoying uh, this series of uh, videos, my sharing my trip to uh, Scotland. And this is the last one from my June 2018 trip, but I'm hoping to go back to Scotland in July 2019, visit another 20 distilleries or so. Um, this is actually a, a distillery that I wasn't planning on going. It wasn't on my itinerary. Um, I had a six hour trip from uh, Donut Castle back to Glasgow where I was gonna meet up with uh, Roy on Aquavite and we're gonna have dinner and have some whiskeys and go live before I uh, head back to uh, the United States. So I originally wasn't planning on stopping anywhere. Except I figured, you know, a six hour drive, plus we're gonna be having dinner and, and uh, whiskeys later on. I'd want to take a nap at my hotel before we get together and all that. But I, th about, I thought, well, you know, about halfway, about three hours into uh, the trek back to Glasgow, I'll stop uh, at another distillery and saw a sign for uh, Dalwini. So I um, took a little uh, stop, a little breather, and I was hoping to do a tour through the distillery. Um, signed up for a tour, bought a ticket, but when I got to uh, the the distillery with, with a group, the, the tour guide, even though I had this camera hanging around my neck, tour guide said, sorry, you can't bring cameras or take any photos inside the distillery. Uh, wow, why didn't they tell me that when I bought my ticket? I mean, obviously I had this big camera there. Obviously I'm a tourist. So if you're planning a trip to Scotland um, and you're making reservations and taking pictures during tours is important to you, you might wanna contact them directly because nobody puts on their website in fact, they don't seem stayed in their tasting room when you arrive that you can't take photos or video. You aren't told until you're just about to enter uh, the distillery. And so sometimes if you do take some photos, not saying I ever did that, you might be snapping some here and there when the tour guide isn't watching. Anyway, I decided, well, I'm not going to go through the tour if I can't take any photos and video. Um, I'm going to want to get back on the road. Got another three hours to go. Get back to Glasgow. So I went back into the tasting room to turn back in my ticket and get a refund when I ran into um, Elizabeth Stewart or Lizzie Stewart, 
um, who uh, is who was retiring, and this uh, whiskey is named in her honor. This is Dalwini Lizzie's Dram. Uh, Highland Sing Malt Scotch. It's bottled at, I believe, 46%, no, sorry, 48% alcohol by volume. It says uh, matured in refill American white oak casks. Um, I've done an uncorking of this live. In fact, if you watched my live, you've already heard some of this before. This is only one of 7,000 bottles available only at the distillery. Well, when I went back into the tasting room and these were on display, lo and behold, who was there but Lizzie Stewart herself. She wasn't doing a signing. She was just sort of popping in. So if I had taken the tour, I probably would have never met her. So I was able to meet her and she signed the bottle. Oh, right here. It's kind of hard to see in black. And she also signed the bottle. Oh, it's also getting in black sort of right here in the corner. So it wasn't necessarily a bad thing that I wasn't able to, to do the tour or didn't do the tour uh, like I had wanted to because I was able to meet her and uh, buy a bottle and get, get a sign. Now let me tell you just a little bit about her. Lizzie Stewart, Scotland's first female operator in malt distilling, uh, retired on March 9th, 2018, and Diageo marked the occasion with a uh, special dram. After 31 years of service at Dalwini Distillery, working in the warehouse, mash house, and the still house, Liz Stewart, or Lizzie as she's known, uh, hanged up her distillery operator's overalls for retirement. In recognition of her dedicated service and iconic role as Scotland's first female operator, Diageo marked the occasion with the launch of a new distillery exclusive bottling aptly entitled Lizzie's Dram. Lizzie, who was 57 when she retired, first made waves in Scotland whiskey industry when she broke the mold to take on a role in a traditionally male dominated field. She first started her career at Dalwini Distillery in 1987, following in the footsteps of both her mother and her brother, and throughout her service has worked in various capacities, including in the warehouse, filling casts, in the mash house, overseeing mashing and fermentation, and in the still house, creating Dalwini's famous spirit. Lizzie also had a spell showing visitors around the distillery as a tour guide. Lizzie is among Diageo's vanguard of female distillers, engineers, blenders, and brand ambassadors, at Diageo in Scotland, a quarter of all its apprentices are female. 17% of the malt distilling workforce is female and 40% are in management roles, reflecting the company's focus on diversity in the workplace. Uh, Dalwini's Lizzie's Dram was matured entirely in refill bourbon casks, which were selected by the team at the distillery. It is bottled at 48% alcohol by volume and it is a limited edition release of 7,500 bottles and is only available exclusively to visitors at the Dalwini Distillery from mid-spring 2018. Alrighty, so as I said, um, I've already done an uncorking of it. I've already tried a little bit of it, and I've got it down now to uh, about the shoulder. So let's give it a nose and tasting. First, color-wise, it is light, sort of golden straw. It's about the color of a Chardonnay wine. Medium intense aromas of canned pear, canned apple, sort of a golden pear. It has this powdery sugar nose, uh, really nice honey, a little bit of maltiness, um, um, golden raisins, has a little bit of apricot, even some peach. It's opened up a lot since I originally uncorked it. All right, on the palate. Nice. One more. Even though it's bottled at 48%, it doesn't have a major bite. Sure, it's got a little bit of tingle on entry, particularly on the first sip. A little sweetness there. It is an elegant whiskey with a lot of finesse. It has pear, golden apples, a little bit of peach, a little bit of orange, actually. So it has some citrus going on there. Maybe a little bit of Meyer lemon. Nice honeyed notes. A little bit of heather and floral notes. Touch of sweet sweetness. A little bit of like powdered sugar and has a real nice long finish. In fact, it finishes seemingly sweet. 
like a, a lemon candy. On the back end, I get some uh, vanilla, cinnamon, cardamom, and uh, baking spices. Has a nice evolution. It's got um, sort of those tree fruit notes up front. Then sort of the uh, sort of powder sugar character kicks in about the middle, and then it finishes with uh, vanilla and just those uh, baking spices. Really, really nice. Give it a score. I'm gonna give it a solid uh, 89 points. This is a whiskey that um, I like a little bit chilled in, a, in a, a, a chilled glass or on ice. And it reminds me very, very, very much like a California Chardonnay, um, but without all the you know heavy buttery notes that some California Chardonnays can have. Alrighty, uh, that's it uh, for this review. Um, if you have followed me along in my entire journey through Scotland, I greatly appreciate it. If you subscribe to this channel, I wanna thank you very much. If you haven't yet subscribed, you like watching my videos, I would greatly appreciate it if you subscribe. And if you wanna uh, be notified when I go live or post a new video, you wanna hit that bell. And I would greatly appreciate it if you would share it with your friends and family on other social networking channels. All you gotta do is hit the share button, a little a menu will pop up, then choose Twitter, for example, click on that, and then you'll be able to share this uh, with your uh, friends and followers on your, your other social networking channels. All right, all right, that's it for this review. Until next time, cheers. If you have benefited from my wine or whiskey studies and you wish to support this ongoing work, I ask that you become a Patreon supporter. The link to my Patreon account is in the description box below.